to get baptized to Jesus yes. Christ. To wash away your sins. Yes. So on your own faith, yes. we baptize you to Jesus Christ. Now, yes. Die with Christ. All with Christ. Yeah. That's <laughs> God, we thank you for Elizabeth. God, we thank you for your freedom. And when she confessed that, another woman came up and confessed the same sin. And suddenly, her tismo already brought life and forgiveness to another. And that woman there got baptized in water. And she experienced that freedom. Later, we were at a meeting with 80 people where she explained how she had done that and it was sin with the abortion. But Jesus had forgiven her her sins. And when she confessed that and shared that testimony at a meeting with 80 people, out of that meeting there came 12 women to her afterward confessing the same. And here we see the power in confessing sins, the power in baptism in water, and what the gospel is all about. Him who believe and is baptized shall be saved, Jesus said. What's really interesting about water baptism is that uh, I believe that through time and tradition, today we, we look at a sacrament very different than what the Bible shows us is really a sacrament. Uh, often we look at a sacrament as an outward sign of an inward reality. And what's interesting about that definition is it takes the spiritual and the physical and it completely separates these two things. And as a result, we only see baptism as something that's just ceremonial and has no connection with anything in the spirit realm. In other words, it's just like a confirmation of something that's already taken place in the spirit. But baptism is very, very different than that. Uh, what we've discovered is that baptism is, is, is not something that's just sacramental as far as being an outward sign of an inward reality. We're seeing that when you go into that water, the Spirit of God is touching that. And when the physical and spiritual connect in water baptism, God does something miraculous. What's interesting is that water baptism is two things. It's both a bath and a burial. And to have a bath, you have to be dirty. So what does that mean? It means that a person who's getting baptized needs to acknowledge their sins before God. And in, in that sense, baptism and repentance go hand in hand. And it, it's turning and in, in, in coming in faith. And the requirement for baptism, it, what God wants us to bring, is repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. A person comes dead in their sins. And what happens is we take that person who's coming in their sins, bringing proof of repentance, and then we baptize them. So when that person comes out, they are brand new and they're clean. And uh, I tell many people that we meet, water baptism isn't just a clean start in life. It is a brand new, clean life to start. <laughs> Let it out, let it out. More, 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 Glory. 
Thank you, Jesus. 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 How do you feel? I was feeling like something going up How here, it's like a feeling my heart. Welling up, huh? It's, it's, it's a living water that's welling up inside of you, and God is releasing that through your mouth. Oh. Oh. And I was like, Jesus, Claudio, you're a brand new man. Amen. Amen. You feel good? Yeah. This is just the beginning, Claudio. This is just the beginning. God's given you this gift now. There's going to be times where you may not know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. And now you can go in faith and pray. And pray, okay. And you know what's great about praying in tongues? I often find that I can concentrate on other things while I'm praying because my mind is not praying. I'm just letting my mouth move by faith. Okay. And the Spirit intercedes through us. Amen. So God just used you. The Spirit just came in and Amen. intercedes through you. Amen. It's beautiful. Amen. Thanks, God. Isn't God good? Yes, yes. He's great. He's great. Yes, yes. I've learned something today. The power of water baptism unto Jesus is no is not no longer like a symbol like most you know most churches might believe, like I used to believe because that's all I knew. I just thought it was like just something you go through, you know, or the sprinkle or whatever. But there's so much power when you truly believe what it's all about, about the death, the, the burial, the closure, the old man, the nature is gone and a, and a new man comes up. As I've learned today, you know, do you uh, believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. Well, old man goes under, you die, and a new man arise. And as soon as he came up out of the water, he said something left him, a great weight left him, and no longer had any hold of his life. And immediately he received the baptism of, his Holy, of the Holy Spirit. And this brother was so broken, he was sobbing, and he was just holding his chest. I mean, it was just so precious to see. It was so precious to see what God was doing in his life. And all he can do was just weep in the presence of God. And for me, just to see what God, how, and he, like I said, he drove, I guess, three, four hours or whatever it was to get here because this is what he wanted. And that thing that was attacking him all this time no longer has power over him. And he's free. He is totally free. And I am truly thankful. So now I have learned that there is something to what a baptism. There is something to repentance the Father. There is something to having the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All three of these things are needed. And that has truly changed my life. And I will preach that message until the day I die because I've experienced it and it was one of the most powerful demonstrations of God, demonstration of God's love that I have ever seen. The reason why I believe we're seeing this happen now is because when that old man dies, Demons lose their, their grip and their grab. They, they, can't, they can no longer torment the dead man because the old man dies. And when you come out of that water, you're somebody brand new. There's a new man <laughs> wearing your old clothes. When Jesus was walking here on earth, he was preaching repentance. And then he was teaching that people need to be born again out of water and spirit. But he could not at that time baptize people in his name. And he could not baptize people with the Holy Spirit. But after the cross, when Peter stood up on Pentecost, we hear the full gospel for the first time. When Peter said, repent, get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Thank you.